So you want to be a millionaire? Well, I can tell you that I never got up in the morning because I wanted to be very, very rich. I believe I used to get up at four o'clock in the morning from the fear of being very, very poor. And the restaurant came about, I was, I was in the West End with a guy, a Japanese guy, new from the TV business now, I can picture it now. And I was sitting in a Japanese restaurant, I was going, what am I going to do, you know, what am I going to do with my life? This rate, I'll have to go back and, you know, drive a truck or have been the worst man's worst fear, live with my mum, you know. I was still on at that one, you know, it's just been a sort of repartee through my life. And he said, um, I said, what about throwing ideas around. I said, what about sushi? Because I'd lived in California and I'd always seen sushi and liked it and I liked sushi and I thought that would be a good idea. And I said, what about that? And he said, he looked at me and he said, what you should do, Simon, is a conveyor belt sushi bar, he said, with girls in black PVC miniskirts, he actually said. Well, you know, we never did the miniskirts, but it was his version of a sort of style statement. And in that minute, I remember thinking, you know, I'd never heard those four words before, conveyor belt sushi bar. Nobody had heard of those in those days. And I'm sure that none of you get this. I'm sure this is just a me thing. But I have this little voice up here. And this little voice that which commentates on my life was going, look, if that was a good idea, some of you who knew a lot more about restaurants would have done that a long time before you do. And it's the same voice that, you know, wakes you up in the middle of the night at about four o'clock and you're sweating and you're thinking, oh, how am I going to pay my bills and what am I going to do and all of those things. And it ends up going, oh, you're not good enough anyway. You'd never get anything together. And, you know, for me anyway, success hasn't really been about you know, what I do and all these things, it's about my relationship with that voice. That's what's, what's held me back all the way through my life and forced me forward. So I've worked out this technique that I call acting as if, to counteract the negative side for me. So instead of saying, I'm going to go out and I'm going to start the world's largest chain of conveyor belt sushi bars and I'm going to call them Yo and that'll be the rock on which I build this brand called Yo and we'll be in Yoganics and Body Yo's and Yo Tells and we'll rival Richard Branson, which my brain goes, no way, you can't even do the washing up in the morning, let alone do that. <laughs> One of the things that I've always, I remember thinking at the time, I've always noticed about successful people is the thing about successful people is successful people don't go around succeeding all day every hour. Successful people are prepared to walk out and put themselves under pressure to take a risk or make the phone call that they're going to get rejected. So I figured if that's what successful people are doing, I want a bit of that. I'm going to set myself, I was just when I was going through the goal setting, you know, that scary bit where you have to write down what you're going to do, then put a date on it, you know, it's going like, I thought, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself daily goals to start off with, and I'll set myself daily goals, I'll set myself six daily goals to go out and, sit and fail, get rejected by the estate agents or the property men or the bank or the money people, and I'd come home at night when I'd had six failures and I'd punch the air, knowing that only through being able to be rejected could I get to find some success? The new word, I think, that we've heard this word passionate all the time, and the new word, I think, is outrageous. And I've started hearing it around. I've been using it for a while, but I always want to be outrageous because it's the only way that I feel comfortable that I'll attract customers' attentions. You know, oh, hi, here, this is me. I'm doing something different. But not outrageous gimmick, outrageous serving you, doing something really spectacularly good. It actually came about through a girl I knew years ago uh, when I was at Super Channel, 
when I was um, helping them develop all of that pan-European television, a girl called Laika, who used to come into the office after being all not up all night dancing and go, yo! And it always made an impression on me. So I really credit her with sort of having influenced me with, yeah, and then I put it together with sushi and everybody went, that's a, that's a stupid name. And in, of course, in hindsight, if we're ever very, very successful, it'll be because lots and lots of things rhyme with yo. There was that great quote from Gary Player, the golfer years ago, who said, the more I practice, the luckier I get. And I think that every time you pick the phone up and make a call that you're willing to risk failure on, you know, somebody might laugh at you, it might be a scary call to make, who the hell does he think he is, all of that business. As soon as you step outside of that comfort circle and do something which you get the butterflies for and you, you, you know, you're not sure if you can do it, you create luck. I tried it as a roadie, I acted the exec, I tried my hands at 